Blog Talk Radio. The motherfucking saga continues. Continue. Yo, yo, what's up, what's up, world? It's badass thugging like I usually do. And you better turn it up, bust some speakers out, because we off the motherfucking cup. You dig how we do it? Dog Pound Gangsters 2000 and beyond. What's up with it, y'all? Man, don't change that sound. This should play a part of the legendary cocaine. And you tuned in live to Off the Cuff Radio. Better not touch that sound. Way, way. Yeah, yeah, this is Cassidy, the hustler. And right now, you listening to the guillotine. Show them the respect they deserve, man. Off the cut radio, man. Y'all already know how they doing it, man. I need y'all to stay tuned. They've been doing it for years. So show them the respect they deserve. And you heard it out of bars, mom. Easy. Keep it moving like this. Yo, this your boy Rampage. You're not rocking with the best. With Off the Cut Radio. Classic. History. Fix your face to all you haters. We off the cup, baby. What's up, everybody? This your girl, Bonnie Dollars, the queen of trap, representing Crenshaw. And you are now tuned in with Off the Cuff Radio. What's up? What's up, y'all? This is Miss Irresistible, giving a shout-out to the live show on Friday nights, Off the Cuff Radio. And I'm live from the 704. Make sure y'all tune in for the blazing hot music. Hey, what it ain't? What it do? Chill, chill from that original lynch mob. Off the cuff radio, always was that on Friday night. West West, y'all. All right, all right. We are now at episode number 530. I'm your host, King Eric, the media assassin. You're now tuned in to Off the Cuff Radio. And this show is sponsored by Da Vinci Clothing, Buddy Boy Entertainment, Fleetwood and the Cod Pickers, Core Financial, Jesse Boutique. A lot of these brands is rocking with us from the beginning. I got my host T Mask with the facts in the building. What's good, bro? Man, what it do, what it do, man. Another super soulful Sunday on OTC, the freshest frequency on the internet. You know, I'm the co pilot along with the first class fresher himself, King Eric the Ruler. We are live and direct. Shout out to our co host and spirit, Ill out of Sandman Lane Chinchilla. And. Before we get into it, we got to send a special, special super shout out to the legendary Littles. Mr. Brian, this is a gift that you have given us, and we are so, so happy that you entrusted us on this. Um, our guest tonight is one of the latest entries in the game, making noise out of them, money making M Town. That's right, you heard it, Memphis, Tennessee. That 901 and then some coming in the tradition of such legends as 3 6 Mafia, Yo Gotti, Al Capone, Kingpin, Skinny Pimp, and so many others. And this man right here is got heat for days. Matter of fact, he got so much clips of contraband in terms of them rounds with his compositions. Look. Ain't no army going to stop his ammunition of lyrical genius. Let's give it all up on Off The Cuff Radio for Big Homie G. What it do, man? <laughs> what, what's poppin'? What it do? What's, what's good, going brother? on with it, man? Uh, man, I'm chilling right now in the studio. Just cool. Definitely, man. Look, it's great to have you with us, man. Thank you for coming on. Oh, uh, yeah. I appreciate y'all, bro. Definitely, definitely. definitely huh? yeah, I can tell, man, that, you know, one thing about cats that's come from the hood, the dirty south, you know, from Atlanta, Memphis, Texas, we always on that grind, man. It, the grind do not sleep, man. And you stay with our consistent projects. And the way you shoot your videos, what I've seen, is the visuals just be crazy. Y'all be having that top-notch visual. So, and going on, man, tell us what you got going on for the third or fourth quarter. Oh uh, man, I just put, I just basically, I just, um, I just dropped the album, Speak Up G. It's on all music platforms right now, and for the, I mean, we just, I just really just keep them, keep, stay working, stay consistent, and like I said, like right now, I'm in the studio right now as we speak. I'm in the studio, I'm, I'm making some hits right now, but I'm taking time out, you know what I'm saying? 
Show, show love, you feel me? Man, look, we appreciate it so much, G. Um, and I mean, we do this for all of Memphis. We do it for Orange Mound. We do it for Whitehead. We do it for, you know, everybody, man. Ridgecrest, Frazier, McMillan, you know, North Memphis, South Memphis. Yeah, the you whole know, time. Everybody. The whole time. Yeah, man. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, uh, like we get it about this time. Um, I mean, tell yeah. us about how you started in the game, you know, how you got on. Um, basically, I've been, basically, I've been around, I've been rapping, I used to roll with Yo Gotti as, you know what I'm saying, as uh, one of his proteges or whatever, and then I end up, um, you know, I end up doing my own thing, me and Moneybag, yo, we came with our own, um, label, Brick Gang, and then it's been up ever since, you know, uh, I, I got behind Bag situation and watched him do his thing, and then, you know, it's, I, I just feel like it's my turn right now. Definitely. It's my turn. Um... Definitely, it's always great to see his collaborate. Got to shout out Money Bag Yo. Um, I don't know yeah. if you were here in uh for, in North of Virginia some years back in 2017 when uh it was y'all Black Youngster. You know, Littles was there as well. You know, Money Bag Yo and uh Black Youngster had a show, and I got a chance yeah. to you know meet Littles. Okay, you were there with them then? Yeah, I was there. Okay, all right, definitely. So we didn't meet, but um, I was there. I was, uh, you know, I was with y'all, you know, backstage at the show and everything. Um, mm-hmm. Got to meet Money Bag, you know, got to meet Littles. I mean, y'all are stand-up guys, man. Um, absolutely was honored to be in y'all presence, you know, just being around the crew and everything. Um, what was it like for y'all in terms – what was it like for everybody in the collective really getting together in terms of, you know, the business aspects, putting the music together – just figuring out the way in terms of getting that hustle moving to get it going. I mean, we we was always we was always friends friends anyway, so it wasn't nothing for us to put our minds together and come up with come up with something to make us some money, you feel what I'm saying? It wasn't nothing mm-hmm. to do it because we already had a relationship with each other, so we just was trying to get out the street. Understood. Yeah. Um, who are some of you who are some of your influences uh, outside of Gotti? Um, we know Memphis, Tennessee is definitely uh, super rich in terms of musical history. You know, every first of all, every everybody that's from the city, they they, 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 mm-hmm. they came before me, and um, you know, everybody that they came before me from my city. Um, you know, I got like I got influences like QCP. I look up to him because one day I want to I'm running my own business now. And you know I'm on the running just like that. You know what I'm saying him and how got to get his 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 uh his staff moving. You feel me? Absolutely. That's what makes yeah. this dope, man. Because y'all got so many different elements, man. Y'all got the crunk element, y'all got the club music element, y'all got the the rhythm and blues type soul elements, and y'all have different yeah. types of gumbo. Yeah, music, music. This is a music city. Yeah, man. I mean, the Graceland giving gifts still. Um, in exactly. terms of what was it, when you really got when you saw that it was moving, what was it like doing shows? What do artists have to understand about the hustle in terms of when this becomes a job? When it becomes all about making sure that the business is straight in terms of you know making sure you have the proper you know studio time, making sure you know your tours are right, making sure your venues are straight. Um, moving around and just understanding that while the glamour and glitz of it is good, this is all a business first. I mean, first of all, you got to make sure make sure you get you some rest, man. Because when it start rolling, it, it, it ain't gonna stop. It's not gonna mm. stop. So get you get you get you some rest. Because once it once it's on, it's on. And um, make sure you just stay focused and stay motivated. You know what I'm saying? And have the right people around you that care for you. That's about you. That's only for you. You feel what I'm saying? And, like, go for it. Mm. Now, Especially. you are... Yeah. Go, ahead, go ahead, Keith, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was say, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying, now you've... Uh, now, lately, you all have still been blazing it, and lately, Glorilla has become... You know, she's broken out of there, really doing her thing. How big oh, yeah. is knowing that, yeah, sim- simultaneously in terms of the movement that you have all started, how you are still inspiring people to come behind you in terms of showing that, you know, 
there are no limits to what one can accomplish when they put their mind to it. I mean, basically, you just got to stay, like, you got to stay motivated. You got to want it. And if you don't want it, it ain't going to be for you. You got to want this thing, man. You got to want it. So you got to go work. You got to work hard. You got to go the extra mile. And, and like I said, and Gorilla, she like she like one of the, she one of the ones, you feel me? She putting on, mm-hmm. in, in them. <laughs> she putting on. <laughs> Absolutely. So we were talking about your peers and everything, man. How do you? What makes you stand out, rapping wise, from a lot of your peers today? Um, I'm big homie, man. You know what I'm saying? I move like that. It's just how I move, and it ain't got nothing to do with no gang or nothing. It's just about being a leader. You know, I was always, I was always taught to, to, to you know, move, move on your own, have your own mind, think your own way. You feel me? And that's what I've been doing ever since. So they were, I guess that was just made me different for me and my peers. Because I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to move my way. And, and, we, and I know the right way to move. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know no hot shit, no dumb shit, none, none of that. We're going to move right. We're going to survive. And that's important, man. We see so many artists that a lot of times they get let themselves get sidetracked in terms of because what you said, G, really resonates about staying out the streets in terms of really understanding how to move, um, understanding the transition. What do yeah, because that's the goal. That's the goal yeah, to get ahead, out the ahead. streets. You know what I'm saying? That's right. the goal to get out the streets. We ain't trying to. We ain't trying to keep rapping to stay in the streets. That's the case. We we want to even start rapping. You feel what I'm saying? So we got to get out the streets. Mm-hmm. We we doing this to get out the streets and put our people and get our people in better positions. Yeah, and it's always something where having that vision of business is important um, because I think a lot of times with certain artists, they get into a perspective of trying to carry it like there's some type of added validation. But like you said, if the streets really know you, then they know your get down, they know your grind, they know how you shined out there. But when you put in another endeavor of entrepreneurship to get rich, you know, it's Certain things just don't mix. And we've seen tragically at times with some artists, they could not separate themselves from that. Um, also, too, listen to, you know, you all do this collectively. You all really are focused on it as opposed, you know, to really, you know, getting out there beefing with niggas. You know, y'all really are just about having a good time, letting the rhymes shine. Um, how important is it for y'all to maintain peace in the game in terms of just being about the music and not trying to, you know, shade somebody else's movement? You know, I mean, I, you just got to stay focused on what the goal is. The goal is to make it to the top and get out, and get out the streets, you feel me? If you steady bringing negativity towards your way, then negativity going to come. You got to just stay focused, bro. I just be trying to stay focused. Like, I don't go outside my comfort zone. I don't do none of it. Like, I'm staying in the studio. Uh, if it ain't the studio, I'm, I'm doing anything that got to relate with music. If I ain't doing a photo shoot, if I ain't doing an interview, if I ain't doing, you know, a music video, if I ain't doing nothing that got to do with music, I'm, 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 I'm staying out the way. And that's important, oh, man. Because just like you said, man, in the early, like you know, you move as a leader, you move as a general, and when you having that mindset already dead, it's easy for you to decipher who to cut off from the clique, who to cut off that's not supporting you, and who is basically. Not exactly. I'm that. already gonna know. I'm already gonna know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna, when I see you, and I depends on how I'm feeling. If I if I if I don't feel your vibe, it's, it's getting cut off. Like, so. If, you, if your energy ain't matching my energy and my circle of energy, you got to get away from me. Yeah, and that's important, man, because uh, as the Japanese proverb said, an assassin rarely comes from a distance. And a lot of times, some people, they get so caught up having an entourage, they don't know the enemy within. And like you said, focus is everything because once that movement starts, one person you know, from interior can affect the whole infrastructure and from there, you know, it just crashes everything. Um yeah. to say 
Yeah, the latest project you got working on right now, if it's not top secret, like, you know, uh, Defense Files, uh, what you working on right now in terms of what's the next wave and what was the inspiration behind it for what you got coming? Um, speak up G, it was just, it was, speak up, I need speak, I need speak up G for my fans, basically. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They was always, I, they always heard me feature on, on Moneybag, on, on Big 30, on Gotti, on a lot of people's albums, but they wanted to hear more from me, so I just did it for my fans. And I got a lot more on the way, such as a deluxe. I got a deluxe coming in probably like a couple more, like probably like 30 days. I got like features that's coming on there too. We ain't gonna say who all I'm gonna put on there right now, but right, yeah, I understood. I mean. Understood. Your homies, forty two, Doug, and of course, Pooh Shiesty. Situations they got caught up in. Um, how important is it to carry the flag while they're down right now in terms of letting them know that the streets haven't forgot about them, that the crew has not forgotten about them, and there's always going to be a place, you know, when they do touchdown again. I'm always yelling free pool shots. You feel what I'm saying? For once he from the city, 42 Doug, I fuck with him too. Free him too. Long as you keep, long as you keep a nigga like like name alive, the streets will never let him die. You feel me? Or never let him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They never, they'll never be irrelevant or nothing like that. Long as you keeping their name alive. So that's what we doing on our lane. We yelling free pool shots. We yelling free for the two dubs. Anytime you see me spread money, I'm saying free food shots without even saying nothing. Mm, and that's love right there, man. You um, know, especially if those guys are like builders within that music scene. It's only that. It's only right for, you know, the people that's coming in after them to big them up and to keep their name out there. Cause that's about you know, sometimes just taking care of your own. Yeah, for sure. In terms of the media movement, in terms of uh, your, you know, wave, in terms of promotional waves, what has it been like going to different cities, touching down with the fans, really getting to sit down with people, interacting and getting that love, knowing people really rock with your shit? How does that feel knowing, you know, when you do a show, people are reciting the lyrics to your songs back to you and you're really feeling that pow- that powerfulness? I ain't going to lie, it's a good feeling knowing it. Knowing that you can get on stage and you ain't got to say nothing and they can word for word versus you getting on stage and they throwing stuff at you because I come from that era. I used to, you know what I'm saying, open up for money bag, yo, doing his tours. You know what I'm saying? And I remember I remember one time I was in New York. They didn't know nothing about me. You feel what I'm saying? Motherfuckers throwing paper. Now that I probably go to New York, they going to recite that shit word for word. You feel me? So it's a good feeling. It's a great feeling. Man, bro, that just showed you right there the drive, because, man, you know how many niggas probably would have just gave up just getting the apple or tomato thrown at them? They would have hung it up. Nah, like nah, because I know, I know, I know, I know what it takes. You feel what I'm saying? I don't, I know what it takes. And then that ain't just, that ain't just, you know, you got to be, like I said, you got to be motivated, bro. You can't, you can't let, it, just, just like if I go out and shoot a jumper and I miss I, it ain't going to, if I get the ball again, I probably, I'm, I, I'm, I'm guaranteed to hit the next shot. You feel what I'm saying? Facts. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's something where you got to have a determination because what you said, you know, gee, really, that's real. Because everybody has to understand that there's going to be the moment of starting out. And you're not always going to be successful or receive well. But it's about staying focused and knowing your confidence of what you have. Because everybody doesn't always see the vision you do. But when you really get it going, they ain't got no other choice but to bow down when they see how you stay with that movement. And from that, you have your tenacity, they respect the movement. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but that's important, though. Man. I mean, even when we look at nah, the yeah, show, show. Yeah, but he's... Yeah, but even doing shows like this. Yeah, very important mm-hmm. like that. Now, how did you? Now, how did you? What made you really want to come up with the name like uh, Big Homie G, like as a stage name? Well, it, my my name was YG, you feel me? And it's always already out the name YG. So basically, right. Basically, um, Bag really told me to change my name. He, 
you know, like I told you, I always move as a leader. So he was like, bro, just change your night. And they already be calling me big homie. Like my, my partner, my close friend, they know me. He like, bro, just change the big homie, too. I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I'm going with this. And we ran with it. So, so you can just you can take that over with bag. Money bag made me change my life. Big homie, G. Understood, yeah. yeah. You got to have that <laughs> disambiguation. <laughs> Look, it's all good. Yeah. It's disambiguation because it's like we get into the gate, everybody has their own identity, and that's part of being a leader, establishing your own identity and then making sure that your name resonates with the platoon. Um, the army, the general is only as good, is only as strong as the army that he has trained and taught. And from there, that's how everybody moves as a singular unit. Um, yeah. Obviously, you saw Gotti move growing up in terms of how he started off at first with Lil Yo uh, at 14 years old when he was doing his mixtapes. Uh, and then our ultimately album. Uh, and you all come from a very tight-knit community of how you all knew each other. So when it all came together, I mean, it's like, and this is definitely not an idol become rival situation. This is your idols become your family and even more exactly. tight in a business aspect. Um, when you look at the years and how it intersects, what was that like to kind of see the growth of what Gotti did from the very beginning, and then watching that morph into where he is now, and all the people that came along with him, you included. Um, uh, I was just, I was just glad that I was a student. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I was a student at the time, and when I and he was a teacher, I was glad to be a part of part of the class. You feel what I'm saying? I was glad mm-hmm. glad to be a part of the experience. I get all the like. Everything he taught me, everything I saw, everything he was teaching me, not knowing he was teaching me, you feel what I'm saying? Me paying attention to certain things that he was doing and how he was handling his business and how he was just carrying himself. Like, I move like that sometimes, you feel what I'm saying? I catch myself like that. I know, bro, bro this is how bro be doing. Uh, I know, bro, you know what I'm saying? But I was just, I'm just thankful, you know, I had a chance to be a part of the see and, you know, come out and, and, and learn from it. Man, I mean, look, him, Big Joe, the whole crew, man. Yeah, like, my brother, bro. My yeah, brother. Yeah, man. My big bro. Yeah. So yeah. who have you not worked with yet that you that you really want to work with in the game? Uh, I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to work with Bryce and Teller. If I, if I can run into him, I'm trying to work with him. Fire income. I, I, like, rap, like, rap-wise, if you were saying mm-hmm. rap wise, it don't, like it, it don't even matter. Like long, whenever I, we bump, if we bump to each other in the in the communicate and everything else, the chemistry there, and we gonna we gonna do the work. Like I don't be tripping on it, but I want to work with like Bryce Taylor, R and B artists and shit. Like different, di- I want to do different shit. Yeah, especially with him, yeah. he got a, he got a great he got a great diverse sound too that can go exactly. with different audiences. Yeah. Especially when he mixing it with that trap and soul. Like you can hit the R&B mind, you can hit the R&B. Mm-hmm. He's hot. Yeah, and, and that's something in terms of showing the diversity of it. And what other, outside of music, what else would you like to do um, in terms of, would you look at possibly doing acting? Would, are you thinking about writing a book down the line in terms of your life? What other endeavors... Um, outside of music, uh, would you want to engage? Outside of music, I got a like, I got a food truck going on right now. Outside of music, I got like two, three houses. Um, that I invest in. And you saying like, if, yeah, I do some acting. Why not? We um, uh, we uh, we've been working on this move for like three, four years, I, and I think it's almost done. We're gonna put it up. It's, it's uh, money bag your move. It's hard. Mm-hmm. And we've been working on it for like three years. So we like as we grow, we doing different things. And it's, it's, it's hard though. Yeah. And you know what, man? Um, I, I, I gotta say this too. Like y'all doing the movie, man. Y'all know you gotta give the people, the retro fan, the energy, the energy back, and 
give us the soundtrack as well. We ain't had a good soundtrack in 20 years, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. All this, all this gonna play a part. All this man a part in it. All this gonna play a part. Yeah, man. In terms of real estate in your food truck, how did you come to that in terms of coming up with those as the additional hustle in reference to your main hustle? Well, you know, I'm, I'm big on eating, so that food truck want, want nothing, they want nothing to do. Um, <laughs> with the real estate, <laughs> with the real estate, my uncle, my uncle really drills it in my head. You know, he tell me I make a lot of money with these shows, and I blow a lot of money also. He just told me, man, you know, put a, put ten thousand over here, put ten thousand over here, put ten thousand over here, go get you some houses, you know, take you thirty thousand, go up there to some houses, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I just took his advice on it. Now, real estate is a tricky deal to move in, homie. Um, what do people yeah, have to yeah, understand yeah, yeah, about the yeah, nuances yeah. of real estate? What do they have to understand about the nuances of real estate? Because obviously, you've been very successful at it, but a lot of people, you know, don't understand. The, the the how it really really works in terms of understanding commercial property, residential property, development, mm-hmm. understanding everything from the area that it's in to even if the soil for you know agricultural purposes is conducive for farming. All this plays a part in terms of when you're looking at businesses in reference to uh, proximity to other places, even a public safety place like fire uh, fire stations, police stations, hospitals. Um, when you all look at these aspects of it, um, what have you learned about um, in your education of real estate? Well, basically, I just get, like, just get into it. So I'm learning as mm-hmm. I go, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes, man, it's like that's the best That's the best teacher, though. It's better than not trying at all. Yeah, and, and that's something that it's always about trying to find a next move and whatnot in terms of how you come in. <clears throat> now, in terms of when you met Little, uh, shout out to Alfredo Bryan, man. Great guy. Yeah, uh, yeah, one of those top. Uh, yeah, man. Um, what was that like meeting him for the first time in terms of his experience already having managerial and rapping, uh, you know, um, you know, as well in terms of that working with Mob Deep and having his own career at one point. I mean, when I when I when I met Little, Little was like Little was like a, a brother that I that I didn't know that I was I was missing. You feel know what I'm saying? Like Little, mm-hmm. Little go hard. He gonna go hard for you as long as you as long as you loyal to him. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So we connected. We connected like like never before. You know, he was he was a money bag manager. He was he was down there all out. He was managing all of us really. You know, at the mm. time when I first when I first met him. Cause we was really coming from the street. We ain't know nothing. We was still eating by the side of this shit, throwing trash at the one. Little was like, "Oh, what are you, what are you guys doing? Don't throw trash." <laughs> so he was teaching us. He was grooming us, you know, to become become men, young men. You know what I'm saying? We was doing a lot of uh, uh, foolish things at the time. So, and he was teaching us a lot of shit. So I respect little. I respect little to the fullest, bro. Like. I get little of all his flowers while he's here. Like, I fuck with him. That's my guy. Man, um, you know, and that's, that's that's definitely heavy nostalgia for us, too, uh, G, um, especially us being Mob D fans and everything. Of course, watching little years ago when he started on his grind, you know, with his first album, The Feeding, you know, uh, which I still have. Um, and he really showed... And he came along at a time in that early 2000s where artists were, like, really grinded. This is before social media. This is before all of that. So, you know, he learned all those lessons at that time to pass to y'all. Um, what have you learned in terms of how what, – what, what have been the metrics now in terms of how social media – from what you've observed and how you've utilized it, how has that helped you in terms of getting your music out there to the world and being able to talk to people directly and really getting feedback right there? You know, of course, of course, social media is just 
it's kind of, it's kind of like I'm, I'm, I'm really like really getting into it. But you know, it's, it's different from when you have to just pass out CDs. You can just put a song up and see if they like it. If they like it, they do. They don't. They don't. They gonna give you your feedback right then and there. So I think it, it's better than back than the, than than the, back in the day when you had to really like grind and sell your CDs and. Now you can just click on the moon and you have a you that's a stream. Like you don't you don't you 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 the sold the whatever, however it go, but <laughs> I think it's better than what it used to be back in the day though. Uh, it's much better. Man, especially and what those yeah. those towns. Yeah. Yeah. It cuts off a lot of the traveling. Exactly. We noticed online with you, I G, that you are very G, G that you're very authentic in who you are, and you don't resort to a lot of clown shit in terms of really trying to sell nothing. The aura of the authenticity of you as an individual, as a real man, as you know, a brother, a son, a friend, an artist, all of that resonates in such a positive fashion of you having a good time and enjoying life. And so many times we see people out there use social media for foolishness that derails the whole uh, it derails the whole movement of what they're trying to accomplish. When you become a brand in the business and understanding what you're trying to do, uh, how important is that to really put something positive and something meaningful out there for the people to see to really be able to gravitate towards and appreciate? Uh, you you got to watch what you say because, you know, kids kids are the most important thing. Right? So kids, mm. don't, kids, don't, kids don't listen. Kids don't, kids don't mark you. They're going to do everything. Like, I got a son. So I be watching what I say on, 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 you know, on certain shit because so, I don't want my son to, to, to think it's cool to do this or say this type of say these type of words or so you just really got to watch how you say watch what you say and watch how you put it out to the universe because you don't give back what you put out. How has being a father enriched your life in terms of having children, you know, and really being able to know that you have a lineage that you can pass down all the wisdom, all the wealth. All the uh, I can uh, infinitely and beyond for the for their generation and beyond. You said, "What was the question?" How does that? How is that? How has being a father enriched you in terms of being able to pass that down to your offspring? In terms of the wealth, the wisdom, and just uh, knowing that you know, Dad is going to back me, and I can do this because I have that love and support from him. You know, being a being a father is a good feeling, but it, it's a feeling I can't even describe. Like it's love, it's, it's, it's love. That I, don't even, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, bro. like it's, it's something it's something I never felt until I had a child. You know what I'm saying? So I, I really can't explain. You know what I'm saying? The feeling. And that's. I think what that comes yeah. with, I think it also comes with, like, you know, it's not really not about you, but also you're a warrior for, 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 your, for your seed as well. It's like now you got to, it, it's about building a legacy for him as well. So it, it changes your perspective. Yeah, yeah, it changes your perspective on life. You look at shit different. Absolutely. In terms of where you look at how you have so much reverence for the respect of the legends that came before you, but we see some artists who are quick to dismiss them and call them irrelevant or they are they don't have a you know, sway anymore in this industry. How important is it for artists today to really understand the, and appreciate those that laid the foundation for them to travel on? You know that they are moving now. You always gotta pay homage, bro. No matter what, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, you gotta pay homage to the ones before you, bro. It's just like showing respect. This is like giving them their flowers. You all, you got to do that. That's a must. This one, this one of the big homage rules. Man, that that. I mean, it, 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 
because it don't get much real than that. And I, and I think you know a lot what, of man, times. I was going to ask you this too, bro. I was going to ask you this too, now. When you first started again versus how you is now, now is this the point of, this, of the game where you really like enjoying it, or have you always enjoyed hip hop? Because a lot of people they come in, they be like, man, I got in the game, it was all good. Man, everything is changing. I'm not. Man, yeah, nah, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't never, it ain't never it was all good. It's always a struggle before the. Before this shit, you feel me? You got to look. You got to look, bro. Like I just told you, we was just eating by eating such. Like, no cap, throwing trash out the one, the one giving a fuck about life until we met a certain person. So it's never, it's never, it's always a struggle before the glam, before the, before the fame. It's, 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 I don't know, I don't know what niggas came in the game already popping in it and, and already, you know, I don't know. I ain't never met them. I ain't never, ain't never been talked about, never heard of. So if they tell me they came in and did this and they ain't struggle, they count. Man, and, and that's what people got to understand. You know, even with what we've done with the show, you know, King started this because he had a vision of what he was seeing out there that he could come in it. And, you know, it took, you know, like anything, you find your voice in it, you know, I'm blessed to be part of this. He's had this going on nine, ten years, and I've been part of it for the past five. You know, shot of Sam and Chichilla, who've been part of this. You know, and, man, and we thank you because it's something we understand it from a independent level. And the, like you said, homie, the, the struggle, nobody starts at the top because nobody can build a building and just lay it right there. There has to be the brick. Uh, persevere. It's the pavement of perseverance, the foundation of fortitude, and the tenacity to get to the top of that tower. And, you know, you just keep pushing. When everybody says no, you got to be the one to say yes, even if it's yes by yourself. And if you're fortunate, you're always going to find those people along the way who share the same vision you do and are going to help you along the way. Um, those that want to see you win will help you win. And we've never forgotten that. Uh, so many people have helped us, you know, win. And we're still winning. <laughs> you know? So we're, we're, we're blessed. We can't complain at all. Uh, for sure. But yeah, man, but, you know, we we know you got to go ahead and uh, finish uh, doing your studio wrap-up and, you know, knock out some more bangers, man. But do you have any... Uh, Shout out you want to give up and, and let people know where they can find your music. Um, this is Big Homie G, Homie with two eyes. Y'all go find my music on all music platforms. I just dropped the hottest album in the world. Um, Speak Up G, you know what I'm saying? I got it on for this two times, featured on there, on The Real Boston Richie, ESTG. Y'all go get that, man. It's hot. Man, look. Man, I appreciate y'all having me, bro. Dude, Always. you know you're welcome back. Look, family, you are welcome back anytime. Shout out to Littles again for the connection. Um, look, homie, whatever you need from us, you know to find us on Off the Cuff on IG. Um, our pages, respectively, King Air Productions and T-Max NBA. Anything you need from us, anything Littles need from us, you hit us anytime, and you know you got us on any type of assistance you all need. I appreciate that, bro. One hundred. One hundred. Say what's up to God, EST, and the whole crew, man, and money bag. And thank you again. You. Thank you. Big salute, man. So, yeah, on that note, we up out of here. 530 on the, is on the wraps. So catch y'all same time next week, same time channel. And we out. Peace.